eight, seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and lift off. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tales Under the Tree. My name's Casey, and today is Astronomy Day. What's astronomy? Astronomy is the study of space and the entire universe. So we're going to join my friend, Professor Astrocat, to learn about space rockets. This book is by Dr. Dominic Walliman and Ben Newman, and it's going to teach us all about how humans get all the way up there into space. So let's get started. Professor Astrocat's Space Rockets by Dr. Dominic Walliman and Ben Newman. Traveling through space. When you look up at the sky at night, you are actually looking into outer space. How cool is that? All of those tiny lights are stars and planets that are millions of miles away. If we got closer, we would see that they are actually very big. Many are even bigger than planet Earth. Do you see stars and planets at night? Take a look when you go outside. In order to learn about space, we send astronauts or space probes to these places. Would you like to see? Let's go! How do you get to space? First, we need to leave Earth. We can't just jump into the air and float into space because gravity is very strong. Do you feel gravity right now? Gravity is the force that pulls everything toward the Earth. When you jump up and then fall back down, this is gravity at work. We need to use a special vehicle with a huge amount of energy to beat the powerful pull of gravity. This vehicle is called a rocket. Do you see a rocket on this page? Oh yeah, right there. Rockets. A rocket's engine is like a car's, except that it burns a lot more fuel and it is much hotter. When the rocket fuel burns, it pushes out hot gas. The gas moves so fast toward the ground that it pushes the rocket upwards. A similar thing happens if you let go of a balloon that has air inside. The air rushes out of it, making it fly around. Have you ever done that? Blown up a balloon and let it go? If not, you should try it sometime. History of Space Travel In 1947, the first living beings were sent into space. It wasn't safe for people yet, so instead, they sent fruit flies. Do you see the fruit flies here? They're wearing little astronaut outfits. Do you think they wore astronaut outfits in real life? After that, scientists began to send other animals into space. Some of the first were a dog named Laika and a monkey named Albert. In 1961, a Russian man named Yuri Gagarin became the first person to travel to space. He went around the Earth once on a rocket. 1961. That's almost 60 years ago. Apollo 11 here is the Apollo 11 capsule. In the year 1969, it carried the first humans to ever walk on the moon. Apollo 11 was enormous, but the astronauts only had this small area to live in during the eight-day mission. The rest of Apollo 11 contained rockets. It took three stacked on top of each other to launch Apollo 11 into space. Let's look at this rocket. It says USA, so it must have been made by the United States of America. And it has three rockets, stage one rocket, stage two rocket, and stage three rocket. Stages of the launch. This is the stage one rocket. It got Apollo 11 off the ground and into space. Since it had no fuel left, it broke away. Then, the Stage 2 rocket ignited and pushed further into space. Then, it fell away too. Can you see the rockets falling away here? And what does that word ignited mean? 
Ignited means to catch on fire. The Stage 3 rocket got Apollo 11 close to the moon, and then it fell away and released the lunar module. Hmm. So the lunar module here is the little piece that has people inside. We can see there are two people headed down to the surface of the moon. Landing on the moon. Astronauts on Apollo 11 used the lunar module to land on the moon. It was a small vehicle that could separate itself from the spacecraft. Do you see the lunar module here? There it is, sitting on the surface of the moon. Two astronauts landed on the moon, while the third stayed in the spacecraft. They collected rocks to bring back for scientists to study. That's cool, moon rocks! When they were done, the lunar module's small rocket engines launched them back into space to rejoin the command module. Getting back to Earth. Once all three astronauts were back on Apollo 11, the lunar module was left to float away. Finally, the last rocket engine broke off and floated away as it was no longer needed. All that was left was this little part, the command module. Do you remember how big the rocket was when it first left Earth? It was huge! Now there's just a little piece left, just big enough for three people. The rest is out floating in space. Do you think it's still there? The command module fell back to Earth very fast and got very hot. When it was close enough to Earth, it used a parachute to land safely in the ocean. Modern Space Shuttles Around 10 years after Apollo 11, scientists created a new kind of spacecraft, a space shuttle. The space shuttle had a massive rocket to get it into space. After it launched, the rocket fell away and the shuttle could fly with its own engine. Does the space shuttle remind you of something else that we use to fly here on Earth? Space shuttles could orbit around Earth and then land just like airplanes. One space shuttle could be used many times as long as it had a new rocket for every launch. Great shuttles and their missions. This is Columbia. It was the first space shuttle to go into space and land back on Earth. It ran 27 successful missions. Here is Discovery. It carried the Hubble Space Telescope, which let us take pictures of very distant stars and planets. We can look at some of those amazing pictures at the planetarium at the Bishop. Challenger had nine successful missions. It carried the first American woman, Sally Ride, and the first African-American person, Guy and Blueford into space. You can see a picture of Sally Ride and Guy Blueford here on this page. Our next mission to Mars and beyond. We don't use space shuttles anymore. Scientists are working on a new spacecraft called Orion. Orion will use newer, better rockets called the Space Launch System. They will be the most powerful rockets ever built. Orion will be able to carry astronauts to Mars and beyond. This is much farther than any spacecraft has ever gone. So we read earlier about going to the moon, but this kind of spacecraft will be able to take people all the way to Mars, another planet? That is amazing. Will you go to Mars? Rockets for all! Soon, ordinary people may be able to travel on rockets. Many people are designing rockets for space tourism. Imagine having your summer vacation on the moon or even Mars! Wow, I wonder what it would be like to go up there. Do you think it would be different than Earth? In what way? In the far future, we may be able to use rockets to travel to other stars in the galaxy and even settle on other Earth-like planets. Stay tuned, space explorers. Maybe you will have your own rocket someday. Until then, keep looking towards the stars. 
Some amazing things are likely to happen during your lifetime. Are you going to be an astronomer? Or someone going out into space like an astronaut? Or are you just going to have your summer vacation on Mars? I'm so excited to see. Well, that's the end of Professor Astrocat's Space Rockets. I learned some cool things. I hope you did too. Let's review a few of the words that we used. Astronaut, a person who has been trained to travel in space. Now that sounds like a cool job. Space probe, a spacecraft for exploring space and other planets. It is controlled by computers back on Earth. Orbit, the oval-shaped movement of a planet or moon around a star or other planet. The moon orbits around Earth, and Earth orbits around the sun. Spacecraft, a vehicle that can travel in space. We saw some cool spacecraft today in this book. Ignite. Do you remember what that means? Ignite means to make something burn or heat up strongly. Like we said, to be on fire. Wow, we learned a lot of really cool things about space and how humans got into space and will continue to go into space into the future. I'm excited to learn all about what happens in the next few years. But right now, I want you guys to join me on a really cool experiment. All right, let's do a little experiment. Remember those three astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission? Well, we're going to do a little test here to see why that parachute they used to get back down to Earth was so important. So I have one capsule, and I'm going to add a little weight to it. And this is just the Apollo 11 capsule without a parachute. Uh-oh. Then we've created another capsule and we've given them a nice parachute. This is just a paper towel with a hole cut in the middle, but you can use any thin material, any shape. I attached to the four corners some strings that I then attached to my capsule. So this parachute should help them get to the ground safely. Let's see what happens. Ready? One. Whoa, that was pretty cool. So which one of these guys would you like to be if you were an astronaut? I don't think I would want to be these guys. They hit the ground pretty hard. But why did the parachute help these guys out? What do you think? Well, let's look at these guys first. So they rushed towards the ground really quickly because gravity was pulling them down. But was gravity also pulling on these guys? Yep, it was. But what was making them move a little slower? So let's look at my hand here. It's kind of pushing this parachute up. That's the same thing that the air was doing. As the parachute fell down, all those little air molecules were getting caught up underneath our parachute, pushing it back up. And that was making the gravity that was pulling them down, pull them down just a little bit slower. So the pushing of the air was counteracting the pulling of the gravity. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I would like to see you guys try this out at home. If you do, take a picture and post it to our Facebook. And join us again next week for Tales Under the Tree. Great seeing you again. Bye-bye.